Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar, go first to be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, we're, we're pretty well used to the, to the Sermon on the Mount. I mean, Jesus is uh, packing a lot in his... In his teaching here, there are any number of uh, any number of parts of this that uh, deserve our uh, our attention. Uh, I think if you if you look at uh, this kind of liability to judgment, right? Jesus is saying, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Uh, wh- what judgment is that? <laughs> Except the the divine judgment. Yeah, it's God's judgment. But we don't see God's judgment as like hanging out there somewhere, as. Um, I don't know, the, the, the punishment that awaits us after, after death. In fact, the judgment is happening now. So we see that the, way that the way that we act as it relates to Jesus and His way, it itself incurs judgment. So, uh, Jesus, and, and part of the reason why this is true, I mean, of course, I do think that there's, uh, there's a theological reality to explore there. We talk about the resurrection and the bringing forward of God's promised future, that's, that's, a, that's a massive thing, and I think that this, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why we can be sure of uh, judgment that, that is here and now. But there is also more, is that because, precisely because Jesus is giving us the way of human flourishing, then if we do not live in accord with His way, then we should expect to not live fully flourishing human lives. But, he, but He's the one who sets the vision. And he's the one who, who sets the standard, right? His own life is, this, is the standard. His, his own life is what we shall be and what we should be. And this is, Jesus lives the fully flourishing human life. He pioneers that way, and he makes it possible to us with the outpouring of his spirit. But here, right, we're liable to judgment. And what does that look like? Whoever says to his brother, Rachel, will be answered to the, answerable to the Sanhedrin. Whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fire Gehenna, right? What, what is going on is that any time we choose to allow anger to dwell in our hearts, or any time we allow anger to go unchecked in us, we are becoming less fully human. Yeah? We're becoming less fully human. Or we are being made less human as a result of our holding on to anger. Now, here's the challenge is that we all do that but you have to face it for yourself. That's the real challenge. We all do it. We all do it. We give it a bit, bit too much space. You know, how, like you look at, um, if you look at a flame, right? What is, what is the best way to extinguish a flame? I should say this because I've been meaning to create a, a, a set of videos on how to do this stuff in the sanctuary. We have very good people who do the things in the sanctuary. They don't need the videos. But I can always tell when someone new has been in the sanctuary because one of the, one of the ways, <laughs> Norberta is laughing, but one of the ways, it's not you, okay? One of the ways is that when I go to light the candles, I have a very hard time doing it because they weren't extinguished in the right way. The best way to extinguish the candles is to deprive them of oxygen. Yeah? Blowing on them makes the wick shorter. Crushing them down means that I have to go and, anyway. This is a, this, depriving it of oxygen. What do we do? We give the flame of anger oxygen. We don't, we don't snuff it out properly. We don't, we don't hold, like, hold it down quickly. 
we give it a, we get a little bit of oxygen. Like, yeah, you know what? I kind of like this. Why do we, why do we like it? We, we like our own, we say, righteous indignation. It's like self, it's really self-righteous indignation. But we say, okay, we like self-righteous in, indignation. One of the reasons why we like it is because it puts us above someone else. But it's not, again, all of these, all these things, just, I'm just trying to stir it up to say, we have to confront it. We have to confront the fact that we hold on to anger. And, and that makes us less than fully human. For, for one, of, one of the reasons being that we're putting ourselves on, on the platform. And, and human beings don't live on the platform, right? A, a fully, fully flourishing human has his feet on the, gra- on the ground. Yeah? So, uh, and of course, look, it, throughout the whole of the, of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is expounding what he considers to be the fu- fulfillment of the Law and the Prophets. And he says in another place that the, the Law and the Prophets basically is love of God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor is ourself. So what did you hear in the anger, giving it oxygen, putting yourself on a platform? You didn't, he- you didn't hear anything of love. And that's what you're made for. This is one of the reasons why we have to be very quick to confront anger and not let it grow. We'll be, we'll be liable to fiery Gehenna. Namely, our, if, we do, if we're not careful, our whole life will become the flame of anger. And we will become a, a burning, burning, smoldering garbage dump. I mean, that's what Gehenna is. Yeah, so, and of course, I don't think you want, I don't think you want that. But we have, we have to make the choice today, not only just to say we don't want to become that, but also that we will, we will allow Jesus to do that work in us today, to, um, to snuff out that, that fire of, of anger. But more than that, to enkindle the fire of divine love in us. Because that's really, that's, that's where we want to be. He's, again, he's pioneered the way. He's made it, and he makes it possible for us, not simply by commanding us to do it or showing us that this is the better way, the fully flourishing human way. He's set, he is, again, breathing his spirit into us so that we can go that way with him. And that way is, again, jo- you know, joyful, self-gift, praise of God, everything, praise of God. Give him the glory and, uh, and live in his service, pouring ourselves out uh, for the good of those that he entrusts to our care.